Hex easy cam. Just how easy is it? Well, watch the video and let's find out. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I'd just like to thank everybody who's subscribed to the channel so far and who's given comments and feedback. Really appreciated guys. It helps the channel so much and it helps me to have more you know more drive to get more content done for you so today we're going to be looking at the hex easy cam mojave fitted to the 1300 gs and first of all before we go any further i'd just like to introduce you to the um the, the place where i bought the mojave easy cam from so i ordered this um easy cam from rugged roads adventure motorbike parts um, they're based in Hampshire and uh, they've got a really comprehensive website. I'd just like to say a big thank you to Rugged Roads. Ordered on a Monday, delivered to my door Tuesday morning. 24 hour service, absolutely brilliant, great price products and absolutely fantastic service. So free shipping as well. So what's the not to like? Please give them a try. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. They, uh, if you look at the website, that they, they stock a, a huge range of motorcycling parts and accessories, um, right from you know from Acropovic exhaust, right up to DRC hardware, uh, genuine Yamaha spares, Senna. You know, the, the, they're not short of anything, guys. Um, really good people to deal with. Um, Give them a try. I'll link them down in the description. So thanks again to uh, Rugged Roads Adventure Motorbike Parts for uh, coming up with the goods. So yeah, um, we'll uh, we'll move on now and we'll go into the workshop and we'll start doing a few bits and uh, show you the uh, the Hex Easy Cam and what it's like when it's fitted to the GS thirteen hundred and some of the settings. Today we're going to take a look at fitting the Hex Easy Cam to my 1300 GS. Um, we're also going to look at adding an additional brake light to the bike. Um, so ever since I ordered this bike, I've always been a bit concerned about BMW integrating the stop lights into these indicators and eliminating a central on standalone rear brake light. Never been happy with that. Um, I don't know how they get away with it these days with all the EU regulations we have and all these new motoring standards and type approval. How do they get away with eliminating a brake light and then integrating everything into one piece? I don't know. This is not common to the GS. It's common to most new BMWs on the market today. S1000R, S1000RR, XR1000, the GS, and I can go on. So I'm not happy that it doesn't have a standalone brake light and a standalone running light. So what I did, I had a look around on the internet and investigated a few different options. I, I ordered several to, uh, to, to try them and to see what, what I thought would fit and what wouldn't. And uh, out of the, uh, the few that I ordered, this is the one that I found. Now, it's very tiny, quite small, discreet, sits nicely under there. It's adhered to the panel with some um, VHB 3M tape. Um, it's absolutely mega secure. It's not going to fall off. It does have an e-marker on it. Um, and when I tell you the cost of this light, the, the quality of this light for the money is simply stunning. So this light, I know a lot of you might laugh, but this light came from AliExpress and it cost me three quid, three UK pounds. Now, for that price, you can afford to have several spares because it's absolutely amazing value. It's IP67, so it's waterproof. It comes as a three wire um, stop and tail light 
You don't need that when you fit the hex easy cam. You only use the stoplight circuit. Because as I'll explain with the hex easy cam, the easy cam itself controls the brightness between uh, tail light and stop. So that's the light, guys. It's very simple to fit on the bike. It doesn't, the, you know, there's a very tiny hole I've had to drill underneath the um, reflector unit, which cannot be seen. It, you know, it, it'll never be seen. Uh, it, it allows the wires to go through. They then follow on into the back of a tailpiece here. And I have extended the cables, which now have a easy cam plug on them that runs up to connect to the easy cam. So I don't think I need to go through that installation, guys. It's pretty straightforward. You know, there's nothing, nothing difficult about it at all. Um, but if anybody's got any issues with anything and they want to know any information, hit me up in the comments, send me an email. I'm always happy to help. But uh, yeah, not difficult at all. I will link this light in the description. I'll put a link to it on the AliExpress website. Uh, don't worry about delivery times as well, guys. This was quoting, I think, quoting 14 days. I had it on my doorstep within four, five days. So all the way around the world and it arrived on my doorstep within five days. It's plenty bright enough, it does the job and it gives you that separation between these two lights and the brake light to let somebody know behind you that you are in fact stopping. Because when you've got your indicators on and you're braking with these, it can become very confusing, I can imagine. So um, yeah, that's the backlight guys. It's a, a real tidy little piece of kit. I think it's it's like a, it's been made for custom applications or something like that, but there's a number of locations you could fit this on the GS as well. You know, it doesn't have to go where I put it. I put it there because it's out of the way and it's approximately, I would say it's about eight mil, eight mil deep that way, about eight, eight mil. Uh, from uh, from top to bottom, about eight mil, and it's approximately seventy five mil wide, maybe yeah, seventy five mil wide, I would say. So, quite a tidy little unit, and I've had feedback from some of the guys I go out riding with, and um, yeah, they've all said it's very visible and, and plain to see from the back. But three quid, guys, you know, if that was a if that was a BMW part or even an aftermarket motorcycle part in the UK, you'd be looking at 30 or 40 quid for that. So, uh, yeah. Um, I know some of the stuff from abroad can be, can be quite cheap and nasty in quality, but I can assure you the quality on this is more than acceptable. And for that price, it certainly gets a thumbs up from me. There's no doubt about it. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice piece of kit for that money. Okay, guys, right, let's move on and we'll have a look at how we fit the um, Hex Easy Cam on the GS1300. So, we'll quickly run through the installation of the uh, Hex Easy Cam. Um, on the 1300 GS, there's a little uh, space under the seat here, which is absolutely perfect for the Easy Cam to sit in. Um, make sure it's got its rubber silicon cover on it. It doesn't get up to no trouble in there. It, uh, it just slots in nicely. Um, mine's, mine's been in there some time. As you can see, look, that's, that's it fitted in place now. Um, right, so what wiring and cabling. So the, uh, the positive and negative uh, connections which go to your battery. There's one there. The brown is the uh, negative and the orange is the positive. So what I've done with these cables, they route out of the back of the hex easy can, around underneath the seat um, brace, and then back down to form a nice tidy loop. And I've routed them down the back of the battery, and as you can see, the fuse holder is there. 
So everything's uh, in place, everything's neat. And that's the, that's the power supply. That's the power supply to the Hex Easy Cam. So we'll move on now to the uh, actual wiring of the Easy Cam into the bike. The other thing I was gonna say is, um, so the outputs from the Easy Cam, they all sit neatly underneath the seat here, out the way, they don't get, don't get trapped or get into any bother. So you can access them as you need them. So when you locate this plug, you can see from the color codings on it there, which plug it is. Now, um, if you just look for a plug with those color codings on it, it has one, two, three, four, five cables in it, guys. This is the end of line CAN bus connector, usually used for the alarm. So to open this plug and to, to remove this waterproof seal cap on the end, simply press down the little white clip on the end and pull it outwards. If you then press it down, you can then remove the cap. Don't throw this cap away. This is going to be used at a later point if you haven't got an alarm system on it. If you have got an alarm system on it, you need to save this safely until you want to take the easy can off the bike or you're selling it or something like that. We then take the easy cam loom that comes in the kit and plug the socket part into the BMW wiring loom. That clicks in nice and neatly. And then we have the connector which connects the CAN bus lines to your easy cam, which goes to this uh, four pin connector, which is already in place. So when you get that wired up like that, if you haven't got the alarm system fitted, this plug won't be used. So then you can replace the cap that came on the bike if you get it the right way. Plug that on till it clicks. That makes it waterproof. And that's how you fit the easy cam into the BMW electrics. It really is as easy as that. So when you get it in, it is a bit of a faff. It does all fit because there is some space down the back of there. As you can see, there's one of the spare outputs there. Um, I'm using two of the outputs. So uh, at the moment, one for a brake light and the other output is feeding the Vantro F1 as a switch supply. So uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the easy can fitted to the 1300 GS. Like I say, very, very simple to do. Um, doesn't take much time at all. Um, and to, if you need to do any maintenance or do any settings on it, you can simply pull the easy can unit out and you can plug your USB into there, which then goes to your, ta to your laptop uh, with the proprietary software through uh, easy can app on the uh, laptop. And that's the bit we'll go through in a bit. And I'll do a screen recording and show you how simple the software is to use. You don't have to be a, a nuclear scientist, guys. You don't have to be a genius. Uh, the, the software, the EasyCan software is quite intuitive. And um, I would say for a, even for a novice, it's quite easy to use. It's quite self-explanatory. But let me know in the comments what you think and let me know whether you think it was easy or not but uh, yeah it doesn't look overly complicated and and we will go through that and we'll do some live screen recording so you can see the the, the software working in action right guys we're going to run through the um, hex easy can software package now um, as you can see we are connected to the bike and uh, first of all, 
I'll demonstrate how you get hold of the software. So first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to go to www.hexeasycam.com forward slash software. This will bring you to the Hex EasyCam website to their download page. So uh, there is information on here on minimum requirements, but I think this software will run on most current, uh, most current PCs and Macs. So you would just simply then click on the link for the software you require. And as you can see, that has downloaded and it's ready to install. I'm not going to install it on my machine, guys, because I've already got it on here and it'll just perform an install error. But it is straightforward. You just open the EXE, agree to the terms and conditions, and it will install onto your computer. Right, when you've installed the Hex EasyCam uh, software onto your computer or your Mac, you'll then be left with an icon on your desktop that looks like this one here. It's a red icon and it's called EasyCam. You open that up, it'll check for the device and you will see this page here. Now there is a registration process the first time you open it up just run through that. This validates your uh, equipment and also it's um, there for your warranty purposes as well. And also for any support that you might need whilst you're using it. So when you open the interface, first of all, you will see this page that comes up, which is basically showing you your circuits. You've got four circuits. You've got a red circuit. You've got a blue circuit. You've got a yellow circuit and a white circuit. As you can see on my EasyCam, I am using the yellow circuit and the white circuit. So the yellow is currently being used. And if you click on the icon, you can then see it has been used as a stop light, which is this one here, brake light. Yep. So in each menu, you have the option to split these circuits. So say you were fitting auxiliary lights that were over the current draw, you can split these between two circuits. So you could have uh, a 20 amp uh, spotlight on the left and a 20 amp spotlight on the right. But for that, you would use the red and the blue circuit. You wouldn't be able to draw 40 amps from one circuit. I hope that makes sense. Now, we'll go on to the fusing at a later date because it doesn't actually use fuses. These fuses are electronic fuses that are built into the uh, firmware. And what they do is they detect the current draw and if it passes over the, the specified amount, it will stop that circuit. And it will need, uh, possibly need a reset to, or, a, or a reboot of the ignition system before it sees that the fault's cleared and it will allow that fuse to work. So as you can see, the white circuit there, I've got that as an accessory. Now I'm using this at the moment to power the, um, the Vantru F1 uh, dash cam, which that system is, is purely just an ignition live system. So what that does is it gives the dash cam a signal to say the ignition's on and the ignition's off. That controls the power to the to the unit and also controls the parking mode. So when the when the switch live disappears, the unit then knows it goes into parking mode. So um, I have got two spare circuits left on here. I don't know what I'm going to put on them at a later date, but whenever you make a change in these boxes or you make a selection, if you apply it, it will then apply that to it. And it does tell you there as well. You can have 10 amp continuous with 25 amps max um, per circuit and uh, 25 amps continuous current draw for the entire system. So I'll cancel that because we haven't made any changes to that. If I was to select something in there, I would get another menu underneath here, guys. So you've also got some diagnostic on this where you can go into the diagnostics and you can see each circuit. You can see the current draw that's coming out of each circuit. Currently, there's nothing on mine because my bike's not switched off. But you can see your Campbell's uh, connector voltage and you can also see your current vehicle voltage. And it also gives you an, an ambient temperature 
and your CAN bus data is active. So you can uh, carry out output circuit tests and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite comprehensive. Um, but by the same standing, it's also very simple to use. Um, you can restore all the default, defaults. You can import settings from another um, Hex Easy Can, and you can export the settings out of this one to put into this to put into another. You can upload fault logs, and there's the About page, which tells you about the uh, the software versions and such forth. Now, because these circuits are disabled at the bottom here you can see that there's no fuse rating. So if I click on that, you can then see, you can then choose what amperage of fuse you'd like on that circuit. I've currently got four amps selected on the brake light and that seems to work fine. Um, on the white circuit, I've got that at two amps and uh, yeah, no problems again. Um, you've got some extra settings in each um, in each section so if we go on to the brake light section um, there's a, a threshold uh, for the light flashing so it has different um, different uh, uh, modes for different brake light modes you can have the emergency stop sensitivity more or less and you can have the engine braking sensitivity now it uses the engine braking sensitivity I believe through the IMU on the CAN bus, so it'll be that that's the device that is used by your ABS and your traction control and your anti wheelie. It's basically a piezo sensor, um, and it's a, a an eight axis IMU, I believe. Um, so that's those settings. Now the basic settings for your brake light, you've got solid braking on. You've got flash on braking, so that will constantly flash when you're braking. Or you can have the California legal flashing. Now, I believe the California legal flashing, I'll go through these and we'll have a look at the different uh, modes. Um, it, I think it flashes three times and then goes to a solid brake light. Um, you can have it flash on emergency stop. So if it's, again, if the IMU senses that you've gone beyond a certain amount of braking force, it will make the brake light flash. Um, and also you can have flash on rapid engine braking. Now, I'm not too sure I'd, I'd need that, but there you go. Now, one thing to mention guys, the brake light I have fitted on this bike is a, a three wire brake light. So what that means is it has a, um, it has a, a ground, a negative ground, it then has a low light feed for the tail light and it has a high power feed for the brake light so it makes the brake light uh, brighter. Now it's not necessary to use those three cables on this system because the Hex EasyCam is so intelligent what you can do is you it, it knows that you're running it as a brake light and an auxiliary light. So what it does, it only supplies a certain amount of frequency to the light when it's in running mode. So that gives you your low light, daylight running or nighttime side light, if that makes sense. Then when you apply the brake light, it increases the frequency or the hertz to the LED, which then makes it flash or makes it illuminate brightly. So um, you do not need to use the low light, um, the stop and tail uh, connection. Because normally in a brake light, you've got a stop and a tail light. This is not necessary. You just connect it to the brake light and you can dim down the daytime running uh, intensity with this slider here. And all you do is you pull that slider up and down and that will make the brake light, uh, the running light brighter or dimmer. I currently have it set to 10% so that when the brake light comes on, it's nice and bright. Um, accessory ignition supply, that's quite simple guys. It's either on or it's off. And you can also set a timeout so that when you turn the bike out off, it has a certain amount of time before it actually turns that supply off. I've just got that set to zero because I don't need it to be 
uh, on for any amount of time after the ignition has been turned off. So if I enable another one of these circuits here, so let's just say we wanted to plug our heated jacket into it, I can apply that and then when that applies, ah, so why has that not come on? Ah, oh, there you go. So when that applies, you can see that then your heated equipment menu comes up at the bottom on the blue circuit. So quite intuitive guys, not difficult to use. Like I've said, you don't have to be a nuclear scientist or anything to work this, uh, this, this uh, software. The Hex have done a really good job at making it very, very intuitive and easy to use. But as you can see, while it's resetting the CAN bus, it, it puts that little exclamation mark at the top. But that's off now, and as you can see, these two circuits are disabled. I'd recommend if you're not using the circuits, just disable them. There's no point having them on if you're not using them. And you can always, at a later date, you know then that you can just um, put it back on whenever you want or, or whenever you want to use it. So that's a quick run, run through of the software from uh, Hex EasyCam. Um, it is, like I say, very, very intuitive and very easy to use. And um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll go through these brake light modes um, and I'll record them so that you can see what the different brake light modes look like. I mean, we all know what a solid braking on uh, brake light looks like. Um, <clears throat> And we all know what flash on braking looks like but this one's not common in the uk this california legal flashing um but we'll run through them and i'll do some footage of the brake light uh working and, I, and i'll put it up on the screen so um hope that makes sense guys um it's quite a like i said don't be afraid of using the software it's not difficult and certainly fitting the hex easy cam is not difficult at all. It's a very, very easy operation. So um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll I'll set the camera up now and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the brake light working in action. So now I'm just gonna run you through some of the settings on the Hex Easy Cam with regards to the auxiliary light. So the first slider, as you can see at the top, is the running light intensity. So this is your side light. And if you increase that, you can see that the light does in fact get brighter. You can then drop that back down, which I have it at about 10%, which I think is more than adequate for a side light. If you go to the bottom, you can actually turn it off. So I leave it at 10%. As you can see, the brake light intensity is currently at 100%. So, I'm going to now select flash on braking. And I'll demonstrate what that looks like when you touch the brakes. So as you can see, the light is flashing and pulsing whilst under braking. We'll now select the California legal flashing. When you apply the brake, it flashes for a few seconds and then goes to a solid brake light. There's no reason why you can't use that in the UK or in other countries. If that's your preference, you can set it to that. Now we'll go on and I'll change it back to a solid brake light. And there's the solid brake light. However, I have got it set so that it detects emergency stop. So if the IMU in the bike detected that there was a rapid deceleration or a rapid stop, it would flash whilst you were doing so, as per the OE stop lamps would do. It's all coupled to the uh, emergency braking light, which is uh, standard on most new motorbikes now. So it would flash on emergency stop as well. So, as I said, quite straightforward, guys. Nothing, nothing complicated there at all. 
and very, very easy to use. So, I'm not going to do an unboxing on the Easy Can guys because, to be fair, you, what, what you see is what you get. The main part of the box, the boxed item, is the Easy Can unit itself, which is the, um, the Easy Can with the silicon rubber. You do get the silicon rubber guard on it, so uh, that's in the box. It's a nice touch, is that? Because when you sit it down the back on the 1300 here, it does give it that give it that protection it needs so in the box you do get some spares so you get uh, spare connectors um, with uh, with two uh, sorry about that with two um, two wires fitted now if you use a three wire product you do get additional cables that you can plug into these sockets to make them up you do also get some um, some blank plugs, which when you're not using that circuit, you fit them on and it waterproofs that um, waterproofs that plug for you. Now these you can remove the blanks out of them if it focuses. You can remove the blanks out of them and you can use them with uh, some crimp connectors to make up your own plugs. You can buy these separate. Uh, they're available on the EasyCam website or from any retailer or reseller of these products. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you get in the box, guys. So, for any further help you need with installation on the um, EasyCam Mojave, if you pop along to the Hex EasyCam website, you will find an installation guide for the, uh, it's unique to the R1300GS. Um, it's very comprehensive. It's got everything in there that you need to uh, install the system onto the 1300GS. There's um, a number of pictorials in it and some videos, and it just basically takes you through all the bits that you need to know to, uh, to fit this to your bike. So, um, yep, that's on the um, EasyCam website, guys. So uh, it's, it's easy to find. It's EasyCam. <laughs> so anyway, I'd just like to say that this video is not sponsored. This video um, is, is, is a product review for something that was bought from my own pocket. Um, yeah, paid my own hard-earned cash for it, so I hope you can trust that the review will be impartial. Not that it wouldn't be, even if it was provided on a uh, sponsored basis, I would still give you a true, honest opinion of uh, of what you of what the product um, is capable of and its uh, its quality, of course. For me, guys, the Hex Easy Can is a ten out of ten. It's easy to fit, it's easy to use, and it's very, very useful. Thank you very much for joining me again on NJW 1967. I hope you've enjoyed the video and you found the content useful. If you have, please give the video a like and consider subscribing. Bye for now.